Really quickly before we start, this video has a zero to hero no programming badge, which basically means you need no background in programming in order to understand it. So let's imagine that we have two equations, like x squared and 2 dx. Now if we want to compare the equations, we could create a table like this. For every cell, we just input the value into the equation, just like so. And in here you can see that 2 to the x in the beginning is bigger, but then it is overtaken by x squared only to finish in second place. But what if we wanted to compare the combinations of these equations? Well then the table will look like this. And now, let's be real here, this is way less clear. So how to fix it? Well, it is actually really simple, because you see we still have only two equations, x squared and 2 to the x. And so now the only question becomes, how do we keep the meaning of this table whilst making it more clear? So here's an idea. How about we say that x squared would be equal to a function called squared, and 2 to the x would be equal to a function called exponent? Well, then we can rewrite it like this. And given that, you know, this might be a lot, let's just change it to single letters like so. And so now you can clearly see the correlation between those functions. And that's exactly why we use functions. It's just a different notation to say the same thing. And you always have to remember that when we say x squared is equal to function of x, then you can always replace function of x with x squared. It is just notation. But why is this useful? Well, it's because functions are not the only ways to symbolize equations. Let's say we have an equation like, I don't know, x0 times a0 plus x1 times a1. Now, if we say that x would be equal to a circle, right? times a would be equal to a line, red line means it's negative, blue line means it's positive, and lines connected together basically means you add everything up, you sum it, then we could symbolize the equations on the left with the graphs you see on the right. Now this is a really great frame, so let's analyze it, because there are three things to unpack here. First of all, the equation on the left. I mean, yeah, it is quite large, but notice that it's not really complex. Yeah, there's, there are a lot of variables and such and such, but it's only addition and multiplication, and that's it. Second thing, the left equation is extremely, extremely bloated in comparison to the simple node tree on the right. And that's exactly why we should use the no tree notation, because it's more readable and it's more simple. You can clearly see the correlation between all the x's and all the constants in the no tree. When it comes to the equation, it's a bit weird. And the third thing is the fact that we can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. If we put two nodes in the end, then we get multiple outputs. But why are multiple inputs and multiple outputs important? Well, it's because if you're creating a machine learning program, let's say an AI that learns how to walk or something like this, then you could create a creature with four joints. It'll probably look like this one, right? It has four joints, one, two, three, four, and basically want to teach the AI how to operate these joints so that it could run. So then what would you do is you'd probably make an equation for it. As I said, the machine learning equation and it would have, let's say, 16 inputs, because why not? In the inputs you will have position, you'll have the position of the joints, velocity, acceleration, stuff like this, and four outputs. Four outputs in here being the position of each and every single joint. And as you can see, this node tree right here is a bit different from my previous ones, and that's because I didn't make it. This is a node tree from the Code Bullets video AI learns how to walk. Yeah, that's the equation. So as weird as this node tree might seem, it is just math. It is just math. That right there is just equation with some a's, some x's and some y's. But there is still one problem. Because you see, up to this point, I have taught you about how machines, right, execute these things, but I haven't told you about how they learn. And that's around the half of machine learning, I would say. And so theory, is quite simple because we just take this function and then we change the constants like a's or b's 
In practice though, we could change them randomly, but that would take a really, really, really long time. So instead, to speed it up, we use calculus. And no, I will not explain how this calculus works, because Free Blue and Brown made already a great series about machine learning and a separate series about calculus, and it's really wonderful. I really recommend you go check it out, because, well, this video is just kind of an intro to show you that machine learning is just math. It's about equations and about creating equations to calculate stuff. So I would recommend Free Blue and Brown's series about learning and about calculus. For now, that'll be it. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.